150 miles, 15,000 feet of vertical elevation gain, a few long stretches of dirt, and world-class scenery. To celebrate a friend who is leaving town, a group of us concocted a big ride from Boulder, Colorado, way up to Rocky Mountain National Park, which tops out over 12,000 feet. Our departing friend Jason Sumner is the author of 75 Classic Rides Colorado, and the guy loves to ride dirt. Therefore, our route pieced together a few of these classic rides, plus the day's true highlight, Old Fall River Road, which is an 11 mile stretch of one-way dirt that snakes up to what feels like the top of the world inside Rocky Mountain National Park. We didn't know what was in store when the day began, of course. My chosen horse for this course was the Specialized Tarmac Disc, largely stock except for the addition of a Power 2 Max power meter. Normally I put a Stages power meter on test bikes, because you can use a Shimano or a SRAM crank, but the Specialized cranks mean you've got to go with something else. Our group of seven were all on road bikes, save our knucklehead friend Garen who did it on a one by cross bike with road tires. Me, I used and appreciated each and every one of my 22 gears, from 3628 up to 5211. Beginning down in the trees, the single lane old Fall River Road climbs steadily up into the Alpine tundra, with streams and snowmelt waterfalls punctuating the sights and sounds of the steep slopes. We didn't have the road entirely to ourselves, but the auto traffic is there for the same reason we were, to soak in the majesty and the beauty of the place. So we felt perfectly safe the whole time. Once at the top, the plan was to bomb down Trail Ridge Road, the highest continuous highway in the United States. With a gradient between five and 7%, it's not crazy steep, but enough for a great ride if you can get a clean shot at it. We were planning on an all day adventure but I got a little more than I bargained for with 60 miles and about 5,000 feet of descending still to go. So we just dropped about 3,000 feet off the uh, top of Trail Ridge Road. A lot of tourist traffic, a lot of people driving cars going slowly, so I was on the brakes fair amount. Resulted in burning straight through a Shimano rear hydraulic brake. There's fluid leaking out on the, on the back, looked like the fluid just boiled over. The front is still fine, so we're gonna take our chances, get back down into town, taking it nice and easy. Down below 9,000 feet, the auto traffic thinned out considerably. I half jokingly told my friends that if I started yelling to pull alongside me so I could grab their back and use them as a brake. My front brake was still working and feeling good as new, and the open roads allowed us to bomb back down the rest of the descents without really even needing to touch the brakes. So after the ride I contacted Shimano. Shimano came and picked up the rear caliper and the connected hose, took that to California, then shipped it to Japan, and discovered that the right piston, a ceramic piston, was cracked. That's where the oil leaked out, that's what caused the brake failure. As to what caused the ceramic piston to crack, that is unknown. Uh, Shimano contends it was not related to heat from braking forces. Uh, they say this based on the fact that the rotor and the brake pads do not show a sign of uh, excessive heat. So the cause of the oil leak, crack piston. The cause of the crack piston, that's unclear. For a little more information on this, including Shimano's full response, please check out my story on bikeradar.com.